and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications Department. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, which is food. Love to food, love to eat, and go out to restaurants. And the Daily Press's restaurant critic is here with us, David Nicholson. Welcome, Dave. Hi, Robin. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's so good to see you again. I know. It's been a while, but uh, it sounds like this show is really you know, filling a lot of needs for people in Hampton. Well, thanks. I was thinking, you know, restaurant week is coming up and I was thinking of how to do restaurants and I thought, oh geez, I've never talked to you about it and you eat out for a living. No, not entirely, but you eat at a lot of restaurants. You're very familiar with Hampton. Let's talk about what some of Hampton's assets are in, in terms of restaurants. Sure, I'd be happy to. It, you know, it's interesting, for the longest time we didn't have the kind of variety um, in Hampton that, that, that we seem to be developing. I mean, there of course were a lot of chain places, but there didn't seem to be a lot of the sort of trendy places like we're seeing that have developed in downtown Hampton along Queensway. Yeah, I mean, I think the chains are a staple and, um, and what you find in Hampton is it's such a trans, all of Hampton Roads to some extent, a very transient place. You have the military and they know what a Red Lobster is and they know what a Chili's is. And, and so there's that, you know, kind of comfort consistency thing. But sometimes what's very much more interesting um, are some of the places that aren't the same from city to city. And I'm certainly finding that true in Hampton. I mean, it seems like, you know, you've had uh, a lot of pizza places all over the years, but now suddenly you've got places that are doing really interesting things with pizza. You know, You're going to talk about Venture, aren't you? Venture, which is uh, Kyle, Carlisle's uh, place, Carlisle Bland, mm -hmm. and who, um, you know, his, his chef and crew have been doing great things. They've got pizzas with artichokes and all kinds of things that you don't normally uh, find uh, at your pizza chain. So. Well, and that's the other thing you see, you know, compared to that you can have a really nice restaurant doing innovative things and it's very affordable. I mean, you can eat there. If you split a pizza and a salad with somebody, it's, uh, it's very reasonably priced. I, so there's a big variety in, in terms of eating out I, too. I totally agree. And down the street is uh, another restaurant, Conk and Bucket, that Peter Pittman started. and. You know, that's a very affordable place too. It's a, a little bit uh, higher scale in terms of pricing. Because of the seafood. I think it's, right. yeah. And but great, great combinations of And a little seafood. higher scale than his tap house restaurant. Exactly. So, so it's fun to see a string of restaurants, you know, within one block with all these different price points and different cuisines and, and they each a, attract a different crowd too. Mm -hmm. And then there's Musazi, they're not quite in that yeah. same block, but no. Musazi's just a little bit farther down and it's been there for a while. And then there's a little ice cream shop on the corner. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it seems to me, you know, restaurants sometimes are pioneers. And of course there's been a restaurant presence on Queensway for years, but as the city does a lot of its, you know, developing in downtown Hampton, you know, the restaurants have gone in there and, and I think they are been a great way to attract people you know, to the downtown area. Well, it feels like, and who knows what, what will develop, but it feels a little bit Ghent-like to me where, you know, you get ready to go out to eat and your decision isn't necessarily where are we going, but it's what area are we going to. So you go to Ghent and you see who has the least line or see where somebody you know is. And Hampton's starting to feel that way too. It's like, okay, well, we'll drive downtown and then we'll make our decision right. about where we're going. Yeah, I think that's true. And then also Peninsula Town Center is the same way. A lot of variety out there. There's been some changes. Yeah. You know, restaurants uh, don't always make it right. in a place. And there's, they're at that point where the leases are expiring and there's a little bit of turnover. But um, Monsoon, I don't know if you've had a chance to go there. I have, yeah. um, that's, That becomes my go-to place when I have okay. the vegan child with me because ah. um, they have such a variety. And that's right. a local chain, right? It is. Uh, the, it's a fellow from uh, Norfolk uh, who opened that place. So Yeah, and then you've got Abuelos uh, around the corner and you've got uh, some Asian places there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you've got now a new Italian place coming in, Bachi. So, and of course, there's the the pub places, the, pub the places, bar Louie, yep. the Green Turtle, absolutely, and, and the the other place, uh, the uh, Park Park Lane. Oh yeah, 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 and that's changed a yep. little bit it too, has. from being um, what very very British right. originally to a little right. more um, European in general, or has broadened right. out a little bit. So again, we've got you know lots of variety and. Ooh, ooh, let's talk about Phoebus for a second, okay. because there's been some big changes there. There has. There has. The blend, of course, is... Well, now that's Buckrow. That's, that's Buckrow. Okay. I knew I was going to get those two mixed up. Yeah. Uh, Phoebus is great. Uh, there's a place um, 
called uh, Old Town Tavern that, that's kind of a, you know, funky little... Now, I like that. I thought yeah. the food was, you know, it was yeah. pub food, but it was right. very good. They right. have music. Pool it's a real casual. Yeah. When I'm going to and from the beach, and actually that would be the Fort Monroe Beach, right. that's the place I stop afterward okay. for lunch or yeah. a late lunch. And across the street is uh, Point Comfort, I believe. And the Point. I think the it's point. The Point. Okay. Yeah. And then up the street is Six. Six is so, fabulous. So you know, lots you can't of go choices anywhere else, there, but too. The, the Point is doing um, a little bit different. It's like kind of upscale casual, yeah. you know, right. when you get the... It, tomato soup and a grilled cheese, but it's a very, you know, thick homemade bread and four kinds of cheese and a tomato bisque. But it's, um, it's a fun, fun environment and good food. I'm always amazed at the number of people that eat out, you know, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, it's and, and it seems like we're providing them with a lot of choices now, which, which we didn't uh, always have before. Right. And I think that's fun. What kind of trends do you see in, in restaurants? I know we've got... Um, quite a few Thai restaurants now in Hampton. Um, what, but what's emerging? What's changing? Well, this this area with the military has always had a lot of great Asian Asian places, and there has been more Thai places opening up. I've also seen a lot of um, Spanish influence restaurants opening up. Uh, ones from, uh, say, Puerto Rico or from, you know, different parts of uh, South America. So. You're going to, all those sort of different international cuisines seem to be growing in, in our market. That's and, great. And, and the idea of the, the gourmet pizza places is very popular. Uh, and a part of it is because of the price, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, uh, it, it used to be this area was, has a lot, had a lot of chains and maybe some steakhouses and stuff. But right, it seems right. like we're really... Uh, expanding into some different areas. And the seafood restaurants then were kind of the, the giant buffet, yep. all you can eat. Right. Um, right. Whereas now you have m maybe a little more preparation. Um. I think those old style seafood places, there were some big ones years and years ago. There was a place oh. called Hispaniola. Yeah, and yeah, then Captain other, George's, yeah, exactly. Fisherman's Wharf. And they were sort of like, you know, the go-to place uh, if you wanted, uh, you know, a big fancy meal. but. But people's tastes now and, and, and lifestyles have changed. And, and they're looking for a place where you can pop in or, or a lot of places offer takeout. So I think all those choices are sort of be, are responding to, what, <clears throat> to the way people eat these days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. the new one on Kikitan Road at the marina. Oh, the yes, Barking Dog. Barking Dog. Which is, is a, a great a fun idea. example, yep. I think. Yep. Just the idea of a hot dog, you know, served all different kinds of ways, plus you know, all kinds of other things that, that he does there. Gary. I was going to say, I've been there a whole bunch of times before I actually tried one of the yeah. hot dogs. Because, you know, they have the fish tacos, they have right. nice salads in right. the summer. Um, and, right. and it's a place, I know one time I was there, you know, people pulled in off a boat. I'm like, oh, only in Hampton mm -hmm. do you get this, yep, you know? Exactly. And people, you know, are looking for places that offer you know, the small, the tapas menu or the bigger menu. Right, like or, six. Or so like, all those kinds of different levels, you know, of dining are what, what people are looking for these days. They're not looking for the giant, possibly all-you-can-eat kind of meal, although we certainly have got plenty of, plenty of buffets around as well for people. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I always sort true. of steer away from those, though. I just feel like that's way too much food. But. You know, I've started to do that, too. It used to be I love those, and mm. now I'm like, a little better quality right. and a little less quantity are good for me yeah, in a whole absolutely. bunch of ways. But you were starting to talk about Buckrow and yeah. Blend, the little coffee house Blend, out there. Blend has been a great little um, kind of oasis out there. Around the corner is a place called Heaven Pizza. And anyway, those have been fun to see. I'd like to see more places like that open up in I would in too. Buckrow. And Heaven's is like almost too small. I mean, I've yeah. never had trouble actually getting a table there because right. a lot of people hang at the bar and right. it's a right. it's a lively right. kind of a neighborhood place, yeah. but a little but a little bigger than and that. And I think maybe as that area grows, you know, we're gonna you'll you'll probably see more places opening. I, I know that every time we go to Buckrow they want, you know, more stores, more restaurants, and we're just almost at that tipping point where you do have to have some more houses, you do have to have a few more people there to really support right. um, what they're trying to I do. I think, of course, a lot of it is tied to the economy. You mm -hmm. know, it's doing better than it was, but there, it's still not to the point where, you know, I think some restaurants don't make it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think 
to be honest, running a restaurant, I think, is one of the toughest jobs in the world. <laughs> you know, I don't think I could ever begin to do it. You it know, you it is hard. Yeah, you work so hard, and then you just sort of open the door, and most places don't do reservations anymore. Mm -hmm. So you open the door, and you just wait for people to come in, you know? And I just think it's really hard. But, yeah. I, but I, when somebody works at it hard and, and, and has a nice formula, I think they're generally going to succeed. Well, and, you know, let's talk about, I, I don't want to call them dives, but some of the older, traditional kind of family restaurants. Right. I know Tommy's on Mercury Boulevard, which is, I think, still in Hampton, but real close to that line. Okay. Makes the most amazing breakfast. Yeah. You know, when you, when the homemade sausage, is, sausage patties are on yeah. the menu, yeah. you know, it's great. Yeah. And it's diner food, and it's fun. Sure. And it always seems to be busy, you know, mm -hmm. when you drive by. Mm -hmm. And, Sarah's uh, and Phoebus attracts yeah. a different audience yeah, than absolutely. the more upscale six. And remember old Fuller's years ago? I love I know. Fuller's. You know, I still buy that mustard. Yeah, exactly. But I miss Nelson Fuller. Yeah. I miss the crab soup. It's right. just, you know, right. it kills me a little well, bit. Those, I have a picture on my wall still of Fuller's. Yeah. And you need those sort of old style places. I mean, and they, they there is a tremendous amount of, um, say, old style Italian, Greek Italian restaurants mm -hmm. in Hampton. And, and they still, you know, provide a really solid meal for a reasonable price. Right. And, and uh, I think they're important too. Well, um, do you see other trends? Are you seeing more local, you know, the whole buy local movement and know where your food came from? Are you seeing that on very many menus? Uh, on some. Uh, definitely at some of the more upscale places where people come in and they say, oh, where did these oysters come from? Mm -hmm. And the restaurateur can now say, oh, we got them from you know, Tommy Leggett up in Gloucester. So. Right, and there's no there's no darn reason not to have local oysters no, here. No, even, but some other can, things, I know there's a new Kent the, farm that yeah, does um, right, bison. Right. I've seen that on some people's yeah. menus. And a lot of the local greens, you know, are, we have wonderful uh, farmers in, in Southside area and out uh, west of here, and they are starting to connect with the restaurants, you know, and bring them, you know, produce. And it's just a great way for people to know where their food's coming from, and, and more people are interested in that these days. I, I think it's becoming a bigger topic. It maybe hasn't tipped yet, but, um, but no. it's, it's there. But we're, I think, becoming a much more sophisticated uh, eating population. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we like to try different things. We like to know where the food is coming from. You know, we, we like to be surprised sometimes. We like, we're curious. We go out, do we want to try some new place that's opened up? Well, and I think that's some of it too, is we do eat out more than previous generations. Both people are working, everybody's very busy, and you don't want the same thing every right. time. You know, exactly. if you did that, you'd stay home and make meatloaf every Thursday. Right. So where else can I go? What else can I try? Yeah. Uh, makes it a lot of fun. One of the things I just love about my job at the Daily Press is going out every week and finding some little place, you know, that I've never tried before mm -hmm. and trying to tell readers about it. because. Uh, some place could be sitting there for a long time and I've just never visited it. We do have a huge variety of places uh, in Hampton and, and the rest of the peninsula for people. That's great. Now, enjoy. Dave, you write a blog that we should tell people about because it's a good way to keep up with restaurant changes, right. chef changes yep. in Hampton and a little, the whole region. We have, I have a blog called The Dish and it is online, dailypress.com. Uh, and, and I try to update it every day with you know, trends in, in the food industry, new places that have opened up, chef, chefs that have moved from one place to another, uh, you know, healthy alternatives. Uh, it's, it's been a fun, really fun thing to work on. You know, and I'll go back um, far too many years, I won't say how many, but when I first met you, you were like a cops reporter. Right. And I was a cub reporter covering um, youth organizations or something right. uh, in the summer. And while I, while I loved being a news reporter, when I got to move to features, it was more fun. Right. You know, it's right. like lifestyle things, things that matter. Reporting on, you know, the crime issues while right. I understand why it sells and why it's important, boy, that's a downer. This is um, a yeah. little more exciting, isn't well, it? Well, I enjoy the work. I mean, I when I was in the newsroom, it, you know, it was interesting, but it, my heart wasn't in it in terms of that I was an arts kid growing up and mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed food and so, Sort of when I got back into the features department, I felt like I'd, you know, found my niche. And yeah. it's really been a good, good place to be. I'm good. very happy. Well, thank you. And um, hopefully we'll have you back again maybe to talk about arts in Hampton that sometime. That would be great. Thanks a lot, Robin. Thanks, Dave. It was good to see you again. You and thanks for watching. Um, 
boy, this just made me hungry. I don't know if it made you hungry, but um, if it did, there's a lot of places to eat out in Hampton to satisfy that hunger. Thanks for watching.